to present and uh, the, all, the floor is, is yours right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, the, I'm Jiwon Kim. I'm a currently um, assistant professor at the University of Queensland in Brisbane in Australia. And this work has been done myself by myself and my PhD student, Pan Shin Wang. So the motivation of this work is recognizing um, uh, the uncertainty factors in our road networks. So in many cities face the everyday condition that is very common problem in many cities and uh, traffic managers are struggling with this managing a uh, different condition. But the most uh, the challenging, the more challenging uh, problem is really non-recurrent traffic congestion that is caused by uh, various unexpected uh, factors. And 2003, the Future Strategic Highway Research Program recognized there are seven major uh, factors or causes for unre unreliable travel time or non-recurrent traffic condition, which include incidents, weather, work zone, tremendous fluctuations, and special events, traffic control devices, and inadequate base capacity. So now we're recognizing these, uh, the uncertainty factors um, give the stochasticity or probabilistic nature of our road network when we try to measure and understand this outcome, which is a traffic state or traffic speed or some performance measures of our network. It's really natural to ask these uh, questions in a more probabilistic way. So what is the probability of having a particular congestion given a scenario? In, uh, which is the first question here. So what will be my outcome of why given some kind of scenario? So the scenario means a combination of those uncertainty factors, whether weather condition, incident, occurrence, uh, the state and the time of day and so on. And the set, second question will be then, what is the probability of the scenario itself? So what is the probability of having that combination, the, having the, uh, the weather is uh, the raining and if there's a incidence during this particular time interval. And then another question might be, what is the most likely scenarios given particular outcome? So when we see and we expect some congestion, then what will be the most likely combinations of scenario that might have caused this congestion? So all these, the queries, probabilistic queries, are really important to uh, answer and we need some kind of systematic or statistic method to be able to answer those questions. So the the approach and the goal of this the research is to be able to systematically model those probability dependencies among those random variables, including conventional factors and also network performance variable. So considering that we have the multiple layers of the conventional factors, whether road work and incidents and so on, and the particular approach that we are taking is using the Bayesian network approach. So the Bayesian network um, model these dependency probability dependency structure using graphical model that include uh, that consists of the nodes and edge structures and showing some dependency uh, the relationship among those variables so formally the Bayesian networks is a probabilistic graphical models that use graphical structure which is directly the cyclic graph to represent our knowledge about an uncertain domain and in that Bayesian network, nodes represent random variables and arcs and, or directed edges represent direct dependence. For example, in this simple example, we have four random variables, including the rain and congestion, spatial events and warning DMS. So we can consider it as uh, only two states where true or false, whether there's a rain or not, and whether there's a congestion or not. So the the, ba the Bayesian network itself encodes the joint probability over these set of variables using this graph structure. So with this structure in this example, we can uh, interpret that congestion is affected by rain and special events, and the special events affect congestion and also causes or um, lead to some congestion warning vehemence. So, for example, if we observe some congestion, we can consider it is caused by either rain or some special events based on this model structure. And if we know that there's been congestion warning VMS, then we, our belief about the, the, causes, uh, 
whose risk being special events would be increased because these would be usually cause congestion and also warning them and so on. So having this understanding our knowledge about this relationship and then mapping that into this structure, we can have a, a systematic analysis of the probabilistic relationship of those variables. And a very important assumption in Bayesian network is the independent assumption, where the variable X is independent of its non-descendants, given its parents. So for example, if the joint probability among um, over a set of probability of set of variables can be just factored into the, the product of its only pairwise parent and node pair based on this independent assumption. And these assumption allows us to represent this a very complex uh, joint probability into very simple the product term. So for example, in our case, if we want to map this entire the joint probability of this for the variable, then by decomposing it into um, child and parent node pair, we can multiply uh, these four, we can represent this as this right hand side. So this shows the probability of condition given its two parents, and this shows probability of warning sign given its one parent, and these two shows just its marginal probability because it has no parents. So in the Bayesian network, there are uh, set to be two components or two parts. And in order to build this Bayesian network, we need to deal with the two different parts. The quality part of this Bayesian network modeling is specifying structure, which is to connect this edge, how we are going to connect, whether there will be edges or not. And the quantity part will be specifying parameters. And as an example, in this example, policy part would be specifying these edges, and the quantity part would be specifying parameter, also called conditional probability tables for each variable. So for here, when rain and special events, we, we have to specify its marginal distribution. And for child nodes, we have to specify, specify these conditional distribution tables. And these structure and parameter both can be learned using machine learning techniques. They are existing emotional technique that allow us to automatically connecting these edges and automatically learning these parameters. And in this uh, study, we use machine learning to learn parameters, but we specify structure using uh, the combination of manual and also uh, the statistical test rather than learning completely automatically from machine learning technique. So once you build this Bayesian network model, we can go back to our original questions about probabilistic queries. We can do two different uh, published inference. So one would be predictive reasoning, where we try to understand the relationship from known causes to unknown effects. And that can be considered as condition prediction. An example question would be, what is the probability of having a severe condition when there is rain? If we consider rain is known causes and condition is some unknown effect. And we can do the other way uh, around which is a diagnostic reasoning. The direction is now coming from known effects to unknown causes, which is considered as congestion diagnosis. The example question might be, what is the probability that there is rain if we observe a severe congestion? Because this congestion is known effects, and we want to understand whether there has been rain to cause this condition or not. Okay. So the overall goal of this paper was to really build the, the Bayesian network model considering uh, different variables, the network and external uh, events variable and the traffic condition variable to predict and diagnose link traffic condition. So um, we have built this Bayesian network model for the um, link along a particular road network in Brisbane. And the first step in building this patient network model was defining variables, and these are the, or the variable that we defined here. And we uh, categorized the, this variable into three different groups. The network environment is just network-wide the variables, which include direction of this link, and day of week, and time of day, and also weather condition. And the second tier of the variables is external events. In this case, we consider this event uh, incidents and we consider three different external events, including instant on upstream of link, because we are, we are building this patient network for a particular target link. 
So we have the variable for instant and upstream link, and instant for a target link, and instant occurrence on a downstream link. And these are all the binary variable. And then the next third tier is a traffic condition variable, which is based on the traffic measures obtained from that particular target link, including flow measure and occupancy, speed, and level of service. And we created another binary indicator that called condition indicator, and that is a binary variable that shows uncongested or congested. And for this, uh, the traffic flow condition variable, we uh, collect the traffic speed and occupancy and flow data for each link, and we uh, plot those fundamental diagram. And for each link, we divide this range of flow, occupancy, speed into four different groups. So we uh, discretize this range of measures into very low, low, high, very high, those four states. And level of service uh, state is just uh, already discretized and category, categorical variables, so we just use those alphabetical number. And for congestion indicator is determined based on this flow and occupancy uh, graph, where if the occupancy, critical occupancy, like occupancy is greater than this critical occupancy and congested region that we consider as a uh, congested state, and if, if not, it we consider as an uncongested state. And the second step of the building vision network model is defining structure. So how to connect these edges. And in this three, uh, the variable definition, where we have three different groups, it was quite reasonable to assume that we can actually uh, enumerate all the combinations of possible grouping, possible configuration. So because we know that environment can affect something else, then it is not affected by any other event. And whether it's not affected by um, incident or day of week is not affected by uh, the incidents and so on. So we try to enumerate all the possible combinations of this, this structure and then we tested this structure um, separately using the, the likelihood ratio test and then the Bayesian network scoring test and try to find the best model from seven different configurations. And then the in order to specify this conditional probability table for each node, we use the parametric learning, and then we, uh, we learned this parametric as CPT from this data, where the data will look like this. So we construct this data table for including these the columns representing the variable and each row representing different observation, and supplying this model to the, uh, the data to model we were able to learn this condition property table for each node. So the study area was one kilometer stretch on Pacific motorway in Brisbane, which shows here. And we included a 90 highway link that include both direction from upstream, uh, the north to south, and uh, this is a northbound. And data sources include uh, traffic data, which is obtained from the Queensland Department of Transport Manual. And these data are from loop detectors, and that is collected for every three minute interval. And uh, the instant data were uh, obtained from this uh, department transport rain node, and weather data was uh, obtained, and the weather data resolution of 30 minute interval, so we match it into a uh, three minute uh, flow, a three minute uh, resolution, so that we can actually match weather, instant, and traffic data all together in the same line. So the overall data covers two um, years from 2011 to 2013. And combining together, we have 5 million uh, records for all 19 links. And in this table, each row represents now three minute traffic, instant weather condition for a particular link. So each combination shows a particular observation, particular combination of the states of these parameters we observed from these um, uh, a, a, a three minute um, instant, three minute duration. Um, based on this model, um, we now tested, so we prepared this data and we have seven different model structure candidates. So now we try to estimate those, the goodness of fitness of each model structure to uh, select the best model structure based on those data, the best model that 
we present this underlying data uh, uh, the most accurately. And these are the some score and the classification error that we measured for seven different structure. And then score, um, the score is a network level scoring from the VM model. And this is overall score for this one, um, the, the entire network. And then the variable specific classification error is we measured for each variable, whether given this model, how accurately this variable states can be predicted. Um, that was measured for individual variable. And then after comparing everything, we found that the, the model G was giving us the, the best result, and which is the, this structure, where the connection external event is affected by environmental variable, and the traffic condition is affected by both environmental variable and directly affected by that, and also external events. I think that we think this structure makes, very, makes sense because we can assume that this traffic condition can be affected by directly by it's just a time of day or day of week or weather, but it's certainly affected by the instant and so on. So uh, this is the marginal distribution that has been estimated for each variable. So these um, items show the state of those individual variable and after we estimate this model using this data, we have marginal distribution for each variable like that. So for directional, we have almost 50-50 southbound observation and northbound observation. Day of week, we have 30% weekend, almost 20% uh, and 70% of weekday. This is just based on frequency of this data composition. And hour of day, we have a uniform distribution because we have the entire days of data is uh, data will be covered as a, our data. And the weather we had in our historical data, 93% of time we had a cleared, but we also had some light rain, moderate rain and heavy rain and so on. And the incident cases was quite rare, but still we have the almost 24% of incidents observed during this the observation period. And these are the distribution for each variable for the traffic state uh, the variables. So with that, I would like to demonstrate uh, some of the analysis that we can do. So uh, this is uh, actually just uh, the uh, graphical user interface tool that is available in online Gini. Uh, one of these the most uh, widely used is the Bayesian network tool. So um, this allows us to give the change of our beliefs um, of some of the other variable, given a particular event and um, evidence cases. So for example, if we click this, that means we have set our belief of congestion variable as congested. So as you can see in this variable, the congestion has been fixed as a congested. And you can see that the other variable actually changes their states. For example, before we have no information about this condition, time of day was a uniform distribution and the direction was the uniform distribution and so on. But if we say, what if there's a congestion happens, then this is the distribution that we get. The so time of day, we, it is likely that 40% of time, this is uh, the, the AMP and PMP, this is a 50% of the distribution. And also you can see that when there's a congestion, the northbound is actually more likely observed um, under this congestion states. And it is more likely that weekday, as you can see, weekday, if you consider this one, Weekday, uh, the probability of being weekday is uh, dramatically increases. So this makes sense that because we have usually a condition occurs in this weekday period. So this is what we can consider as a, a diagnostic reasoning where given the congestive states, what the hour are the distribution of this other scenario variable and not. And you can do now prediction reasoning. So considering that these four cases, we have information about these four cases where I want to see that when there's a, this is a southbound, 
and this is a weekday and the morning heat, and this is a clear day. And you can see that the congestion, the probability of congestion, given these are uh, the evidence, the probability of congestion is 0.3%. And if we change this time of day from a.m. peak to p.m. peak, then you see that congestion, probability of congestion increases from 0.3% to 20%. So that gives the impact of the time of day or p.m. peak. So when there's a p.m. peak, then you can assume that probability of condition increased by 20%. And let's uh, look further at the impact of this heavy rain or weather. I'm changing my belief and my evidence from uh, clear to heavy rain. And again, you can see that congestion, probability of condition increases by 20% from 20% to 40%. So with this, you can um, calculate the probability of condition of any combination of subset of this node and also you can, you can uh, compute the probability of observing some combination given another set of combination. So this gives us to uh, um, answer that any type of probabilistic query that we uh, ask about this, the relationship of the, uh, these variables. So uh, with this probabilistic uh, uh, modeling, and this is a Bayesian modeling uh, model built, we have done a, a number of application analysis. So the first thing that we, done, we have done uh, was association analysis. This is to quantify the association between individual scenario variable and the congestion occurrence. So our, the particular interest of variable is congestion indicator, which has the binary states. And we wanted to analyze what is the most influential the scenario variable, what is the most uh, important variable, whether it is, it is a weather or it is the time of day, we want to quantify those strengths and strengths of this dependency and relationship in terms of pairwise. So we use this odds ratio. The odds ratio is the ratio of the odds of an event occurring in one group to the odds of it, the same thing occurring in another group. So this measures how strongly the event is associated with the first group compared to the second group. So for example, if we consider two groups, one is a rain group and the other is a no rain group, and we define the old ratio in this way. So ratio of the probability of condition given rain group and versus the no condition given on the rain group, and divided by the ratio of probability of condition under no rain group and probability of no condition on, uh, under uh, no rain group. So if we have a ratio greater than one, that means this congestion is more likely to occur with this first group, which is rain group, than no rain group. And if the order ratio is smaller than one, that means this congestion is less likely to occur with the first group, which is rain group, than with this second group, no rain group. And if this is one, then these two have a no uh, association. And the one problem with this uh, was because this old ratio is the less likely occurrence is between zero and one, and this is unbounded in the upper bound. So we usually uh, convert it into low scale so that we can have the scale from the negative and uh, positive to measure the same association. For in in the log of odds case, the log of a rate of ratio, if it is um, positive, then these two are more likely to occur together. And if it's negative, then this is less likely to occur together. So we measure this old ratio between each pairwise, this uh, the relationship between scenario variable and condition variable. So scenario variables are the uh, the, the first two tiers of variable here, direction, day of week, time of day, weather, and instant. And our target variable is condition indicator here. So with this uh, relationship, this visualizes the direction and also strengths between uh, this relationship of this pairwise. So for example, you can see that the, the positive side, which is a higher association with the congestive, have um, the weekday and AMP and PMP and rain cases and incident cases. And among those, the weekday factor has the most strongest impact on this association. 
and the PMP is the next. And the other side, which is now showing this uh, less likely association between these condition states, is whether if this is a subfound, uh, this is a weekend, and this is morning, if this is OP or nine, night, or is it clear, then you can expect that the condition is less likely to occur together with those states in this manner variable. So this way we can visualize this trend and also uh, the, the direction of the influence, uh, actually the strength of this influence uh, individually. And then the next thing that we uh, have done was to understand the combination of those variables. So previously we measured the strength or association between individual variable and the condition. And in this case, we went to measure the relationship between the combination of particular scenario, particular scenario combination, to this target variable here. And in order to quantify that, we borrow this concept of risk analysis, where the risk analysis, uh, the risk is uh, defined by multiple, uh, uh, the product of impact and its probability. And we define each component um, as follows. So the risk is, in our case, this is condition risk. And we define it as a probability, joint probability of observing both condition and the combination of that scenario. And the impact of that risk is that conditional probability of condition given a scenario. And the probability is the probability of having scenario itself. So intuitively is that what is the uh, probability of having condition given uh, these combination of scenario? And then what is then the likelihood of having that particular combination? And combining these two components, we can quantify and measure this condition risk. So the F, P of S, probability of S is just a probability of joint variable of these seven variables. So we measured these two components. It is uh, readily available, these, all the probability given, probability condition given this condition of scenario and then probably the scenario itself is readily available uh, from this Bayesian network model. And we uh, computed all the combination of the probability values and then plotted it in this uh, graph. So these x axis shows the probability of scenario and the y axis shows the probability of condition given scenario. So this shows the probability of, probability of risk and this shows impact of this risk. And this is currently in the low of uh, the scale. And each dot represents the combination of the scenario. So with this particular state, combination state of scenario, we can find this position in terms of uh, by computing this probability of scenario and then probability of condition given that scenario. And then based on this, definition, we divide this entire uh, space into four different regions where we define the high probability and high impact scenarios and high probability of low impact scenarios and here low probability of low impact scenarios and low probability of high impact scenarios. And what we need to focus on is high probability and high impact scenario. So based on this uh, the, uh, partition, we now focus on these particular scenario combinations and we, collect, uh, uh, we selected 40 high probability, high impact scenario display. And these 40 scenarios are shown in this scenario tree. So each number is the number shown here. And the, this each number is actually the combination of these particular state of this seven scenario variable. For example, scenario one, which is scenario one here. I can see, yes, here. This is the combination of southbound direction, weekend, time of day is off peak, and light frame and no instant cases. And scenario two is this combination and so on. And we show this uh, probability of scenario itself and probability of congestion given that scenario and this joint probability, which is uh, some uh, product of these two in these columns. And then we also visualize the quantity and magnitude of each component using this bar. 
So this green bar shows the probability of scenario, and this orange bar shows the probability of congestion given that scenario, and this blue bar shows the probability of uh, joint probability of this, which shows the overall risk that we define. And there are some interesting patterns that we can see. And based on these uh, joint probability or the risk that defined, there are many cases you can see there are some uh, larger bar that you can see here. And we first focus on the one that has higher, very high joint probability because that have both very high probability of scenario and high probability of condition given that scenario. So we identified these two cases from the scenario tree. And we found that this is actually these two combinations. So when there's a direction, there's a southbound, and this is a weekday, and PMP, and the clear day when there's no rain, this is the most likely and the most probable condition situation. And if we look at the northbound case, this is actually now reversed the time. So in the northbound, A and P actually produce this kind of situation where it is really likely to occur. It's a very common scenario, but the condition probability of given scenarios is very high. So as you can see that these are just no, no incident and no weather rain. And this is just a typical uh, recurrent condition state for each different direction. So this can be identified from these two different cases. And another category is where we see a bit high uh, the, the joint probability, but the condition probability is very low, but just because it is high, just because this scenario is just so common. And this is, we identify these two scenario cases are um, showing this tendency. So when there's a scenario, a southbound and weekday and off peak, and uh, clear weather and northbound weekday and this is a PMP and these combinations have a very likely to happen but its condition is uh, the condition probability given these combinations of, uh, is a little bit lower so this is what we can see that higher occurrence uh, scenarios with higher occurrence probability but have low condition probability and the the reverse pattern where we can see the similar bar uh, the size for this uh, combination of these two components is a blue one, but in this case, now the scenario probably itself is very low, but this impact is very high. So it is really rarely occurring, but once it occurs, it is certainly there will be congestion. So these scenarios are these two uh, cases. For southbound direction, this will be weekday, and PMP and then light rain and the northbound direction in the weekday and it will be AM peak and light rain. So it, it means that um, when there's a light rain and this is a very, so because the rain, the overall the margin distribution of rain was not very high, so it's not very likely to occur, but the probability of condition under this condition was very high. So based on that, we can identify different scenario cases and kind of we can categorize the condition scenario and uh, condition situation based on different scenario cases, as you see. So maybe the first two cases would be the most the, the important case that we have to uh, focus in terms of traffic management. But for the second and third one, we might have a different strategy to deal with. So we can actually create some different the management strategies for each scenario. And when we have that particular situation happen, then we can retrieve those associated uh, strategy solution to deal with this uh, situation uh, more uh, responsibly. So, and then, there's another group that we identified from here and this is just a general pattern that we can see from this visualization and you can see that over this visualization this group of scenario has a very high uh, condition probability and this is also a very high condition probability and you can so identify some kind of group of 
combination of scenario that gives uh, this uh, probability high, and this is a southbound, it is a PM peak, and northbound, it was a weekday AM peak. So it just demonstrate that the group of scenario cases that we have to um, focus on during each uh, the direction. So yes, this is what I mentioned in terms of application of this type of scenario tree, then we can identify a set of important scenarios and we can prepare some suitable actions for each scenario type separately. And some example of communication of this patient network is that it can be readily integrated into real-time uh, the incident prediction or condition prediction because we can calculate the probability of incident, probability of traffic condition, given any combination of known evidence. So this is just showing the example of um, some, uh, the, the application. And if we can calculate the probability of condition, given the known the scenario variable, and for example, this is a time of day, it's um, 8 a.m., and this is Monday and weather is clear, and we can compute the probability of condition for each link based on our model. And then whenever we have new information arriving, we can update our knowledge or our belief about the probability. So instead of having just showing this, the current traffic state on the map, we can actually show the probability or risk of condition on the map in, in, using this probability modeling. And this can be used for the hotspot analysis or uh, the High risk area detection because it when you the probability of condition exceeds a certain threshold, you can give an automatic uh, warning uh, signal so that you can uh, have a, a focus on the managing those the area and the monitor better in case there will be actually congestion or actual incidents happens. So um, with that, I would like to conclude my presentation by just. Uh, uh, summarizing the work. So this study applied the Bayesian network to model this causal dependency relationship between various traffic uh, condition factors and this traffic condition, traffic performance measures, the variables. And the VM model is very useful because it allows us to combine this expert knowledge into quantitative or machine learning techniques. The expert knowledge is uh, the how to connect this the network and you know that already that something has a strong dependence and causal relationship and to others and these expert knowledge can be integrated but the remaining of this very complex integration you can still learn by just supplying the large number of data and this the validation network model can um, play an important role as an inference engine for answering uh, various probabilistic query in in assisting the real-time traffic management. And we can also understand what is the causes of condition given this particular in, uh, the observation or outcome of interest. And so as a further research, we are actually extending this model to um, develop a model to be more suitable for the short-term prediction because currently this model doesn't have a temporal component and is more stable this is more the model that captures this uh, statistic, uh, static dependency structure among those variables. But there are uh, other the techniques in Bayesian network modeling called the dynamic, dynamic Bayesian model or temporal Bayesian modeling. So you can actually um, predict the traffic condition and a T plus one based on our information of T, T uh, time T. So we are trying to, uh, based on this work, we are trying to incorporate this model to um, actually help the real-time traffic management context. So thank you for listening to my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Well, thank you, Jiwon. This, uh, this is an excellent presentation and, uh, and excellent research. So our audience, uh, so feel, feel uh, free to ask. You can ask uh, using your mic by unmuting yourselves and then asking a question, or you can type in the chat box, and then Jiwon can uh, read the questions there as well as answer them. 
Hi, this is John. I, I have two questions, if I may. Yes. Uh, the first question is, uh, can you go back to the slide where you show the model selection? This one? Uh, yes, I see. So, yeah, I think that's the one. Okay, so, um, are there any close competitors? I mean, I can imagine what would happen in, in practice is that out of these uh, models, you might find several that are sort of very close contenders. And how would you, how would you choose the, the best one? So not only, I mean, between these Bayesian network, um, you mean the different modeling approach? Yeah, so there's, there's seven different configurations, okay. seven different models, right? Yeah. So just in, just in general, um, how how good is the is the best model compared to the rest, and what would happen if you had s several competing models? Yes, I mean it, it is certainly that because this is uh, the approach that we took was enumerating uh, the possible combinations that we think make sense, and then only comparing those seven candidates. So there might be other combinations, but usually the other combinations are just doesn't really make sense. So for example, if you have edge from external event and in environment, and this is a counterintuitive, and we actually tried some of uh, the existing the machine learning structure, uh, structure learning techniques, but we didn't really get this very satisfying result by just completely letting machine learn. So there, the results will look some how very counterintuitive, for example, my instant cause this time of day and so on. So that's why we try to just incorporate our expert knowledge in building this network. And of course, this is a quite simple model that has only these small number of variables. But if we include lots more uh, variable, then I think we should uh, use the learning techniques more. And so, yes, I mean, we just compared as a relative with this of fitness, but this it doesn't tell that this is the best among all that even the untested models. Okay, so an interpretability has a, has a large role in model selection. Yes, and the interpretability is validated. Uh, so once you choose this model, and you validate this model by testing into another set of data. So if we have the 50, uh, millions of data which is used to learn this model. We also have a different test set that try to actually predict the observed one uh, using this selected model. And that's where we can actually get whether this model is um, credible or this model actually gives us the result or not. And I think that that uh, test was quite satisfying for us. Okay. And then the second question, I think it's slide 27. We show the log of the odds ratio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, is there some notion of a confidence interval to get some understanding of how significant these um, log ratios are? Uh, could you say again? But is there is there some uh, notion of a of a confidence interval? Confidence interval. Yeah, so I'm thinking the case where, in fact, there's no association. Um, some of these values look quite small, so I'm just wondering whether they're significant or not. Mm. So. Yeah, for example, I guess I would be worried about uh, the last, uh, last condition there, the odds ratio is equal to one. In the statistical test against that. So, yeah, so yeah. something close to here. But, yeah. yeah, I think that this is magnitude actually is much more meaningful when you compare relatively, and it doesn't actually uh, give this confidence interval about how the significant this magnitude is, but is I think that it is a uh, if you consider these the most largest association mm -hmm. measure and the smallest association measure, and we just wanted to see the relative the association level between these variables. So I don't think we can actually have a 
particular meaning from the um, absolute magnitude. So just to give that, this is more likely to occur in the first group than the second group. So this measure itself is just relative comparison. So this is more likely to occur when there's a weekend, weekend then there's, this is not weekend. So, so that, that's what we try to uh, measure here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's very nice. Thank you very much. So I think I have a follow-up question on, on John's. Um, so, so have you investigated the, uh, the results using a regular statistical method? So how would they be, how are they, or how do you expect them to be different if we just employed the regular traditional statistical method with the significance, p-values, and... Uh, 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 and, so, uh, and confidence intervals. I mean, uh, the, the, I mean, the model prediction results, right? I couldn't hear you, sorry. So the probability, uh, um, so the question is, how do you actually compare this with the traditional uh, the, so, so I'm. Uh, what I'm understanding is that you're trying to model the uh, the causality. So, what are the possible reasons that cause congestions or the likelihood of congestion happening, given given all these uh, independent? Uh, yeah. So, I think that what what is most useful here is to really you can see that increasing probability by changing the state of other combinations. And usually the, the regression model or trans, uh, the traditional model, we focus on mean value, right? And then we add this error term, but mostly what we are predicting is based on the average value, what is expected value given the combinations of particular uh, the observation, right? Yes. And in this case, we are trying to actually calculate this complete joint distribution. And so we can compute the probability of this combination and as you can see from the, my demonstration, you can actually see the increase in probability of particular states. I mean, if you consider this a mean value, then if you have a very 0.4% of incident, then still the mean of incident variable will be just uh, always non-occurring. But if you really consider the, what is the probability of increase in having incident or condition, and that actually is quite useful to really see the impact of uh, changes in variable. No, I see that makes sense. So my last question is uh, about the thresholds that you chose uh, on this figure on the bottom left. So you yeah. chose which comes from the previous slide. So in the previous slide you had the four quadrants. Yeah. So my question is about how did you choose these thresholds? Well, I think that uh, so the green line uh, less than point oh one and the uh, and the orange line between the uh, one one thousandths and one ten thousandths. So how? So if yeah. you could explain how you chose these thresholds. Yes, I think that there was a, a different criteria that we used. The first of all, what we focus on choosing these four uh, these scenarios to include the all the states of these all the possible states for each variable. So um, as as much as possible, because uh, if you focus on some of these area, then you may only see something that is just very much likely to occur. So for example, you don't really see from northbound you, the, the, some, uh, the combination scenario, if you, if you select them differently, you may not see some PM components here or you just lose the, uh, the mo uh, moderate rain component here and so on. So what we're trying to do was, it was a bit of the 
calculation and also manual the observation, but try to include as many states as much, much as possible in selecting. And it was quite apparent that you can actually try to divide it into these four uh, the quite uni uniform the equal distance, but there was a bit of adjustment around this central point so that you can actually try to include, if this is a weather case, you try to include as many uh, the weather states observed as possible so that you can actually see all those combinations of uh, the scenario tree is more in, uh, most meaningfully. Yes, thank you. That makes sense. Do you have any other questions from our audience? All right, so thank you very much, Dion. Uh, great presentation.